Hello, Les from Thailand here. And following on from my video about finding it hard to retire here in Thailand, I want to tell you a couple of stories that I found was very interesting whilst I was traveling around the world. Basically, when you've worked all your life, you do different things and you train to get further skills, qualifications and education through all your working career. But there's nothing that prepares you for when you retire. You get maybe his one day course of preparing reti to retire and what the suggested things you can do. And our, our course at the fire brigade was three days and it was very, very interesting to listen to this guy explaining about how to retire and what to do. Quite funny, I thought, but it was interesting. But I've been retired now for 11 years and I w I've got many, many stories that I can tell, but there's, there's two stories that I want to tell you here that I find that it, it changed my view and perspective of life with regard to retirement and what you can do. The first story I'm going to tell you is about this Canadian guy that I met. Um, on my second year of round the world experiences and travel, I was working in France and um, there was a program called Work Away or Help X where you, you, you exchanged time for working for free accommodation and free food. Now I met some wonderful people whilst I was doing this. And um, as I say, as far as saving money is concerned, if your accommodation and your food and your drinks were free for, for the sake of doing four or five hours of work a day, it was a brilliant way of traveling around for next to nothing. So anyway, going back onto this Canadian guy that I met. He was 35 and um, he used to work in Canada as a manager of FedEx. And talking to him, what a very interesting guy he was. And he was saying that his, his job was mundane, did the same thing every day. He had a bad relationship with his girlfriend, always arguing, always not enough money to pay the bills at the end of the month. And he said, there's got to be more to life than doing this. And then one day, his girlfriend got up and walked out and left him. And he felt that this was the, the start of changing his life and what he can do. So he thought about it. He, he said, do I need to carry on working? Do I need to carry on doing what I'm doing day in, day out? So he decided to wrap his job in as the manager of one of the branches of FedEx in Canada. So he sold his apartment put the money in the bank and decided to travel the world for a year and because he was a manager he had good skills he thought he'd get a job if he ever came back to Canada no problem so that's what he did he sold his apartment in Canada and went to Europe and he had no skills or qualifications with regard to doing anything manual labor wise or skill like electrician plumber joiners he was he was a mister manager of a FedEx um, delivery service so he decided that okay I'm going to learn some skills whilst I'm away now in France where he was working in the south of France in a place called Tillac uh, a lot of the buildings are of limestone and there's a lot of people who want limestone rendering doing it in other, in other words pointing around the brickwork in a lime mortar and it makes it look beautiful so at one of the workaways that he worked at there was a, a master builder and he, he was traveling around Europe doing the same thing but because he was a, a qualified bricklayer and mason he could pick up work wherever he wanted to work very very easily and my friend from Canada decided I want to learn this it looks very good and he took to it like a duck to water being able to lime render people's houses and point up and he, he was a craftsman at it after six months or so. So I met him in year two of his round the world trip or his round Europe trip. And so he was very, very good, but he was telling me the story, how he learned how to do this. And again, I asked him the question, so when are you gonna go back to Canada? He said, Les, that's got to be the most asked question that I've ever, ever had. He said, you know, he said, everybody that I talk to, asks the same question when am I going to go back to Canada so he says my reply is why do I want to go back to a job that I hated why do I want to go back to maybe it's a relationship get in the same routine nine till five doing the same thing day out every day and he said where I'm working now 
in Europe, he said, I can work anywhere in France doing what I'm doing. He said, I work for five days a week for four or five hours a day. And then he said, for earning money, he said, because there's many people want the, the lime rendering do, doing. So he said, I'll go work for them on a the weekend. And he said, I, I make 150 to 200 euros per day doing this lime rendering. So he said, at that rate, I'm on over a thousand euros a month with my free accommodation. So he said, why do I need to go back? So why do I need to go back to Canada to do a job that I hate? He said, when I love doing this job, I'm out in the open, I can pick and choose where I want to, to work. He said, I have a number of properties that are house it in the winter time. And so he said, that's free accommodation. So he said, I've sort of got it right. I'm very happy with myself. I'm 35 year old. And he said, I have no need to work to be able to earn an income in Canada. He said, I can live where I want to around the world. So this is what I choose to do. And it is until I get sick and tired of it, he said, this is what I'm going to do. So that's just sort of an inspiration of, if you're prepared to get out of the box and do something different and take a chance in life, you can go and do these type of things. You meet some very, very interesting people all around the world. And the second story I'm going to tell you is, I met this couple in Vietnam. We were on a bus from A to B and it was six hours on a bus. And the only two seats that were left on this bus were right at the back of the bus. So it was a very uncomfortable bus, as Vietnamese buses are. And we got sat next to a, an English couple. And we were on that bus for six hours and we never stopped talking. Wow, what a very, very interesting couple they were. Um, <laughs> for 18 years, they've been traveling around the world for 18 years. They've never worked for 18 years. So that the only income that they have is from a house, a two bedroom terrace house in Bolton, and they rent that house for 500 pounds a month. And that's their only income that they have when they're traveling around the world. And whenever they come back to England, they have a transit van with a mattress and a porta potty in it. And that's their accommodation. So they have a friend who maintains the van, so every time they come back to England, as and when, so when they come back to England to drive the van, it's tax tested, insured, and maintained so they can drive around in it, and that's their transport, and that's their accommodation. But they only ever come back to England for short periods of time, and then they're off doing their various jobs. And what they did is just house sit. That's all they do, painting and decorating and house sitting. And they just travel around the whole of Europe. They have various people that they um, do house sitting for two or three months at a time, looking after pets, looking after cats and dogs. And that's how they survive. And that's free accommodation wherever they, they go around in the world. And what a very interesting guy to talk to. He sort of get away from society and he does what he wants to do. And when I looked at his life, what a fantastic life. And I tried a bit of that. We, we looked after somebody's house in Orvieto for three months, right in the middle of the mountains, five miles from the nearest village. He was a retired judge. She was a retired barrister. So you can imagine the quality of the house that they were living in. It was a beautiful house. And my job for three months, with me and my Chinese wife at the time, was to look after their black cat for three months. We had the run of both houses. We could do what we want and it was no food or drink that provided but just free accommodation what a beautiful part of the world to live in again it's an example of how you can live for very cheaply around the world so when you're retired there are many things many things that you can go and do many qualifications that you can go on you can go on a photography course you can go on a, a fishing course there's many things it opens up a whole new world of being able to do various things other things that work stop you from doing. So retirement isn't a barrier, it's another opportunity to do many, many things that you can. So that's my advice, is follow other people, investigate for when you retire, the things you can do, and it's not just sat in a bar and relaxing and doing nothing. It's good for the first one or two years, and then you've sort of got to do something. So if you're interested in more stories like this, Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Maybe subscribe. There are many, many stories I can tell you of this. Out of 11 years, I've spoken to many, many different people. 
and gained some very good experiences and listened to many, many stories about other people's lives and what they do in retirement. So retirement is a time to explore and do something different. So from Les, living the dream in Thailand, till the next video, bye for now.